Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. It is Monday, I have just finished the outro to my old vlog, so I'm still currently reading In Real Life by Neve Shulman, who is the guy from Catfish. So I'm, I'm off to read some more of that. Alright. Terrible frame in there, terrible.
I love you since I knew ya. Who we'll never talk down to ya. Got to tell you just how I feel. I won't share you with another boy. Now my mind is made up to put away your makeup. I told you once, I won't tell you again. It's a bad way. To put on red light Roxanne You don't have to put on the red light What are we doing? The robot know to leave I want to lock my front door Stop waking up in a bed full of people Hiding in the cupboard with my real best friend But I'm young so I'm not going to turn the shock stop Cause I'm not joking, drinking too much Socially it's not Ladies and gentlemen, would you please Give it up for the elk!
Called. Oh, I don't even know. What was it called? Speedy Hoisin Mushrooms. Although I forgot to put in the Pak Choi, but it still looks pretty good. And I'm watching Line of Duty. Kitty, 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 kitty. Ah, it's Monday. Monday evening. I'm a little bit hungover. I'm not gonna lie. But yesterday was fun. Uh, I went and played at Belfast with my band, The Ilk, which is me and my friend Dave, who plays the guitar. Then pretty much whoever else shows up. So that was a lot of fun. I appreciate this vlog's been a bit weird, because obviously... Oh, Biggie, you're on my stomach! <laughs> Heavy. Um, what are you doing over here? So yeah, I appreciate I haven't really done too many updates last week, so have I, Biggie? Uh, so there was the Art Centre open mic on Friday. On Saturday, Bex came over and we watched some of the Hunger Games movies. So I'm probably going to read the books of those at some point. Bye then, cat. Um, but yeah, I've been enjoying those. I'm currently watching Line of Duty and just cracking on with some work. Got a bunch of videos edited, including some ones that I filmed ages ago. So that's good. So now I can like film some new stuff, which is very exciting. Uh, update, update my eBay shop as well. I'll link to below if you want to take a look at that. Get rid of some old books and a few vinyls and stuff. And uh, yeah, and earlier today I made that delicious food. That was good. Cat, why are you sniffing my knee? Um, I will probably give you another update later on as well with um, some of the books that I have recently read. So yeah, and we'll, we'll see how long this vlog goes for. We might do like a two week vlog because Bex is off on holiday now. Isn't she big? You're not going to see her for a while. She's off to see some friends in Wales. I think she's going camping. So, um, so I'm just going to be home alone. No attacking. Um, but I'm going to use that opportunity. I'm actually starting to quit smoking. So I'm on like 12 hours at the moment. Which ain't too much. But it'll get there, you know. So I'm going to use this opportunity to spend like a week just at home. Just not really going out. Not spending any money. Not smoking. And uh, being productive. So, yeah. <laughs> Why are you being so playful? You're so very playful. There's a purry cat if I ever heard one. Come on then. Good boy. All right, here goes. Let's talk about some books. So, what have I read? Hmm. Okay, well last time I, I mentioned what I was reading, I was reading In Real Life by Neve Shulman. Love, Lies and Identity in the Digital Age. This guy is the host of MTV's Catfish. You might recognize him. and. It was quite interesting, there was some really kind of cool stuff about how we like look after our privacy online and that sort of thing. But also it was interesting to read about him as a person because he was a bit of a wrong gun for a while or so, like he was selling magic mushrooms and weed. He actually come across as a bit of a womanizer and I read after writing and posting my review that he has been accused of sexual assault I believe at some point. Don't quote me on that because I don't want to get sued, but I'm pretty sure I saw that. And it kind of didn't surprise me from the way he was writing, but he kind of... From the way he's writing about it anyway, he sort of says that he's he's changed, you know, he's kind of matured, which, I don't know, I don't know the guy, so I'm not going to pass judgment on, but the book itself was pretty pretty good, pretty interesting. Uh, probably like a 3.5 out of 5, and it actually had some similarities with my non-fiction book, Social Paranoia, as well, so that was cool. Here we have A Bit of Fry and Laurie by Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie. This is um, like script basically from the A Bit of Fry and Laurie TV show, which I am a big fan of. But also the problem is, is because I've seen the show so many times, like I used to have it on while I was falling asleep. I know all of the sketches off by heart. So in like it, the humor kind of fell a bit flat because I already knew all the punchlines, you know, but I still gave it 3.5 out of 5 and there are a few of these that I want to work through. I'm just going to give a shout out here, I didn't actually read it, but this is Tess of the Durbervilles by Thomas Hardy. Uh, basically I read and studied this at school and I realised I didn't have it in my collection, so I bought a copy of it to go in my collection. 
Then I read Why Didn't They Ask Evans by Agatha Christie, and even though there's like a big golf ball skull on the cover, I, you know, I was dreading this being a bit like Murder on the Links, where there's loads of golf stuff in it, and I, I, I don't really care for golf. But no, it, it was just where a body was found, and then it kind of kind of goes off from there. And um, Why Didn't They Ask Evans is, is like a murder victim's last words. And uh, so, yeah, it's interesting to watch the investigation there. And also, there was um, no Poirot or Marple in this one, so it was one of those sort of unusual standalones, but I made it kind of fun to read, you know? Uh, overall, I gave it like a 3.75 out of 5. My only real gripe with this is just the print is so small. This is one of the, the old paperbacks from, like, the 70s. And, I mean, did people have better vision then, or... I don't, because I, I have good vision and I can only read these under like direct light, you know? Here is The Ice Bear by Jackie Morris. This is just like a little children's book. It was a bit hippie ish, to be honest. Um, I picked it up just from a charity shop just because it was 49 pence and it looked really cute. Biggie, stop me owing. And yeah, I, I probably gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. It was a fine enough little kid's book. I don't necessarily agree with like the sort of the spirituality and stuff of it, but each to their own, you know? And now I am just finishing off Murder in the Muse by Agatha Christie. So this is another one of the ones with tiny print. This one's actually four short stories and they're all featuring Hercule Poirot. So, so far I have read Murder in the Muse, the title story, The Incredible Theft. And I'm like just at the end of Dead Man's Mirror. I have four pages left. And then there is another one called Triangle at Rhodes. So I have that to look forward to. So I'm going to read these, and then over there I have Mrs. McGinty's Dead, which, for some reason, I've picked this up from a charity shop, and for some reason it, like, wasn't on my list of books that I want, so somehow that one had slipped me by, but um, I'm glad that I saw it, because, like I say, I could pick it up. So, yeah, that's where we're at. Biggie, 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 biggie. I am watching Mara. It is Tuesday. I slept until about 5 p.m. Oops. It's 16.50, so I slept into about 4pm. Uh, don't want to show you my bank account. Get out, get out. I am doing well on the quitting smoking. Let's see what the app says. If it ever loads. One day, seven hours and 50 minutes. So that's good. 66% nicotine expelled. This app's pretty cool, and I've been earning achievements. I've regained seven hours of life, which is enough to read a book. Hooray. Uh... Over here we have some stuff, so I've got this new cookbook, I've been going through picking out some recipes from it um, that I want to try. And I've been reading Mrs. McGinty's Dead by Agatha Christie. Uh, my to read list is now finally down to 150 books. I want to get that down to 50 really. But And I've got these packages as well, so this top one here is from Time for Books here on Booktube. And this bottom one is uh, like a very rare edition of uh, Frankenstein that I've been sent. So I'm super stoked about that. I'm going to unwrap those in a bit. Only other thing to mention is that I finished reading uh, Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats by T.S. Eliot. Uh, this has got illustrations by Nicholas Bentley. It's an old Faber and Faber edition. It's very beautiful, but it's not very good, to be honest. I mean, it's all poems about cats for children. Let me read you some of one, because they're quite long as well. The Rum Tum Tugger is a curious cat. If you offer him pheasant, he would rather have grouse. If you put him in a house, he would much prefer a flat. If you put him in a flat, then he'd rather have a house. If you set him on a mouse, then he'd only want a rat. If you set him on a rat, then he'd rather chase a mouse. Yes, the Rum Tum Tugger is a curious cat, and there isn't any call for me to shout it, for he will do as he do do, and there's no doing nothing, and there's no doing anything about it. Yes. I'm going to have like a little centre parting today. This kind of suits me with my hair like that. I don't know. Anyway. Middle. I've been up all night, but I have at least made a cake and it looks delicious. And I'm watching a documentary on uh, the Thai cave rescue. Oh, I feel terrible. <laughs> I feel actually terrible. I was just reading up. So I still haven't smoked. I'm on two and a half days without quitting smoking, which is good. But it says the peak effects of nicotine withdrawal occur within between two to three days. <laughs> What's it say? Let me read this. Hang on. The most intense withdrawal symptoms begin a few days after last using tobacco. During this time, former nicotine users may experience anger, impatience, restlessness, concentration issues, anxiety or depression. These effects last from a few days to a few weeks. 
I was getting very angry at this pinging actually, it's tweet deck, and I went for a lie down because I feel terrible. And uh, yeah, common let, yeah, common nicotine withdrawal symptoms include headaches, sore throat, intense cravings, nausea and abdominal cramping, constipation, depressive feelings, slowed heart rate, hunger, restlessness, thinking problems, and insomnia. And we all know how I do with insomnia anyway. Uh, thinking problems actually it, i am a bit muddle headed at the moment but i'm i'm doing all right um i've got a headache right now uh, and i've been waking up with really bad sore throats and like last night i was lying in bed with just like really bad nausea i thought i was going to be sick in the bed and having like stomach cramps and stuff but also i have ibs so it's par for the course but yeah i'm doing all right <laughs> Apart from, apart from that, uh, I'm still reading Mrs. McGinty's Dead by Agatha Christie. I've nearly finished now. I am enjoying it. But I've also been filming and editing loads of stuff. And this vlog's getting to a decent-ish length. So I think we are. We're going to leave it here. And we're going to go and film some other stuff. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. And if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.